Hey, what's going on Facebook? It's Camille Prosperity out of Pula, Georgia. What's going on Instagram? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to have to talk to y'all while I'm getting ready to go pick up my little one. That's partially what this video is about. Many responsibilities of women. I'm usually not the woman power girl. Um, however, in this video, some things going on y'all. And I just got to tell you. Um, what time is it? Okay. I just got to tell you some things I'm, I, I'm noticing. I, I was like, should I speak on this? Uh, because I don't like to do like controversial things. I don't like for men to jump on and be like, yeah, yeah, tell the women they wrong. I don't like for women and everybody in social media got an opinion. And I'm just telling you, I'm really not in the mood today. So if you don't agree with me, that's fine. Agree respectfully. Otherwise, you'll be blocked because you have your own platform, your own profile. So you can go there and say how you feel about what I said. And that's perfectly fine. Um I'm speaking from my experience. So I titled this on Facebook. I don't know what it will be by the time it gets to YouTube, but I titled this on Facebook, Women We Wrong. And I did that because last, what, this time last week, I think I was in Texas at the, I believe, the Believe Nation. And tell me where you're watching from too, guys. Replay viewers as well. I was in Texas this time last week, at I believe. And um, I go to a lot of conferences in case you guys do not know. For those of you who are new to me, I am a single parent who has a wonderful young son. I work full time from home mm -hmm. with my home based business. I do not have a nine to five, haven't had one since about mm, 2014 ish, somewhere in there, even though I have a master's degree. Um, and I'm very, very thankful for how I make money using the internet, using social media, even though social media can tend to get on my nerves because post divorce, and I'm just gonna tell y'all about something that, you know, in case y'all have never been through it, Nobody cares about your kids. Sometimes not even the other parent. Nobody cares about your kids. Not the courts. Not well. No, and nobody's going to care about your kid or has to care about your kid like you. So whatever your kid is going through, if your relationships don't work out and they're seeing toxic relationships or they're seeing you being broke, whatever your kid, however your kid is internalizing that, whatever your kid is doing to make money because you don't got no money, no, nobody else cares about that. Nobody cares about the mental effects that your life is having on your kid. So I'm happy. That I get to be at home because I get to deal with that with my kid instead of having somebody else like my mom or who's wonderful or my grandmother who's wonderful. Instead of having them raise my child, I get to raise my child. I get to talk to him about this stuff. I get to see what's going on with him. I get to be there for him. Now getting into that, getting into that. Y'all know I recently went to a, a conference. Like I said, this time last week I was in Texas. My kid was there with me. Missed school for five, six days, something like that. I lost count. I bought him a plane ticket. Why? Because it's all on me. Now, I noticed at this conference, like most conferences that I go to, there were way more men than women. Now, that could be because I'm a tomboy and I'm naturally attracted to more male leaders. Like, I'm not the one to go to a raw, raw, girly conference. Like, let's all bond together and, and cry about. I don't tend to go to those conferences. So, you know, that could be it too. Hey, Coach Lakeisha, you were there. I do tend to resonate more with how a male delivers a message because whether you like it or not, this is a man's world. And so I'm a direct person. I've hung around a lot of men. I have a lot of male friends. I deliver messages very direct, in case you don't know me in real life. And so I tend to receive messages better direct, right? But I notice not only in these conferences, but often holding this like a cigarette, but also in um, my courses that I take, there's a lot of men in there. Now, here's another thing you may or may not know about me. I, well, I said it earlier, I have a master's degree an MBA with a concentration in finance. I have a bachelor's with a minor in Spanish. I have a technical certificate and something else. I'm not big on degrees. I'm saying it to make a point. Okay? And it's so funny because there are a lot of women out here who have tons of degrees. And they, they got multiple pieces of paper. And they still sweating Negroes with nothing but a birth certificate. 
right? So a degree doesn't make you more valuable because guess what? Even the guy with a just a birth certificate, I'm getting to it, he might be more valuable in the marketplace than the woman with a whole bunch of her degrees. I've seen it time and time again. So here's my point. In these courses, in these seminars, in these conferences, in this informal education, when I I have spent six, more than six figures on formal education going that direct path that people told me to go to school get a good job climb that corporate ladder Kim okay I bought into it six figures in student loan debt six figures now I've spent tens of thousands a mere fraction of that on informal education mentors coaches people that say buy my course now I vet them I vet them very well but I've spent a fraction on informal education um than what I spent on formal education. I'm not a big makeup person, so I'm telling y'all right now, even when I do my makeup, I'm gonna look exactly the same, but it makes me feel better. So don't don't comment and be like, what the heck did she do? Uh just bear with me. Okay, patronize me. Alright, so anyway. I noticed that in school, formal education, all the colleges and universities I've gone to, alarmingly, there's infinitely more women in the classroom. The ratio of women to women, the the ratio of women to men in formal education, astronomical. The ratio of men to women in informal education, astronomical, right? Way more men paying mentors and coaches and get into the bag, as you ladies like to say, way quicker than us who are studying math, English, math, English, math, English, four years, and then getting into a... It's, it's totally different, okay? Coach Lahisha said 99K in student loan debt. Oh, yeah, tons of women I know have... Tons of student loan debt. Now, women aren't the only ones with student loan debt, but I'm telling y'all right now, I'm noticing that women place w women, we wrong. We are wrong in this day and age, 2022, as of the making of this video, when we place more emphasis on formal education versus informal education. Of course, vetting the person properly, we're wrong. You sitting up here trying to become a nurse. Do you know how many nurses? Coach Lahiji, are you still a nurse? I'm not sure. But do you know how many nurses are in my home based business? And that blows my mind because I'm like, man, y'all had to learn anatomy, biology. Y'all took out terms and loans. Y'all had, do you have to do residency or whatever? T way more time than I took. And y'all still unhappy with your job. Y'all still saying you, you work in multiple shifts, sometimes lying about working at multiple hospitals because you need the money. And you know that if you, if they know that you're working too many hours, then you're going to get in trouble for that. Like that, that's, 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 that's insane. Last year, dealing with COVID, how they did y'all, insane. This year, some of y'all not having a choice to get, you know what, insane. I can't imagine putting in all that work and being mistreated like that. It's not just nurses. It's tons of professions. And in corporate in general, I know because I used to sit on hiring boards. While it is technically illegal to discriminate against a woman, y'all don't be stupid. Okay, well, uh, Try not to use such harsh words. Don't be silly. I used to sit on boards. Women would come in interview. Men would come in interview. If they saw a woman that was married, they would act like they were having a nice conversation with you after the interview. But basically what they were doing was in a sly way asking you questions to see if you had kids. And if you had kids, when you left that room, they'd be like, let's get the guy. And basically, in so many words, they didn't want to have to deal with a woman because they knew if the kids get sick, the woman is going to go. Not man. Mama going to go. Not daddy. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Well, Kim, since that's illegal, why didn't you say something? What am I going to say? I'm going to say, hey, y'all can't do that and then lose my job because I'm a whistleblower? When the deans are sitting there saying this stuff and I'm just a lowly administrator? How many of y'all have been on jobs where you've seen and heard things go on and you're like, this is not right. But you know, you can't go to HR because HR is buddies with the dang old CEO and everybody else who's in power. So we are striving to get degrees and formal education to enter an environment that already discriminates against us. That already has an issue with us over our male counterparts. That already, I, I remember when the President of that college pissed off his secretary and she let all his business out about how he was giving raises to the guys and not to the females. I remember finding out how my male counterparts were getting paid more than me, even though my evaluations were better than theirs. I remember. 
Now, some of y'all are in corporate and you love it. It's worked out for you. You're one of those women who are making a strong six figures. And that's awesome. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. For the people who have found themselves like myself, where corporate didn't really work out for you. <laughs> and then your marriage didn't really work out for you. I'm telling you right now, because I see y'all. I see y'all in a divorced women's group. I see y'all in a single parent group. Y'all like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to school. Stop it. I don't care what you say about me. I'm telling you from experience. I'm telling you from all of the people that reach out to me and ask me, Kim, how is it that... And I'm not saying that my life is carefree and I'm living a laptop, laptop lifestyle and always on the beach. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying, though, is that I no longer go to sleep with a, 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 a horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach at night because I have to go to a job that I hate with a box that I hate um, year after year. Where they're not going to, they're just going to make another excuse why they don't give me a raise, why they give somebody else a raise. Um, I'm telling you that I'm, I'm thankful while what I do may not be perfect. Because as long as you're dealing with people, you will deal with the mess. Oh my gosh. Um, while what I do may not be perfect, I'm happy that right now I'm going to go pick up my son. I'm happy that I have a job where last last week I could take my son with me. And I'm, I'm telling you women, I'm telling y'all. Yesterday was Valentine's Day, right? I looked at y'all's pictures. I know some of y'all, some of y'all don't even want to be with those men that y'all with. But he's paying the bills. He's buying his teddy bears. I don't know what y'all doing with teddy bears at 40 and 50 years old. I prefer an Amazon gift card myself. That's no hateration. I just don't know what y'all are doing with teddy bears and at 40 and 50 years old. Still on Valentine's Day. But hey, that's you and your man, right? But I, I, I saw plenty of y'all. Some of y'all, and again, you've been married 20, 50 years. Your man gave you a teddy bear. Teddy bear, I'm not talking to you. Your kids gave you a teddy bear, I'm not talking to you. But for those of you who I can clearly see, you don't like this dude. You just want to have something to post for, for Valentine's Day. And you're just in there because you don't want to be single. We're doing it wrong. I'm also not talking to the people who are like, I don't need no man. You're on, your, you're on an island by yourself, girlfriend, with that. What I am saying is this. Maximize your season of singledom. And start looking at where the marketplace is going. No loss. Is there this huge focus on MBAs like there used to be and formal education? You are setting yourself up for failure, especially if you have kids. If you think that the answer to your problem is more education. Terry E. G. Oma went to MIT, interned at Wall Street. She ended up being an assistant principal. She was making $60,000 a year. And her principal, her boss, was harassing her about mismatched thumbtacks. <laughs> Terry Ujioma said, well, screw this. She started, um, she started marketing her own skills, came out with a course. Last year, she cleared $40 million. She paid a mentor that I paid in 2019 to learn how to construct her own course, successfully launch it. Last year, she cleared $40 million. She was making $60,000 as an assistant principal, having graduated from MIT with um, an intern on Wall Street. Y'all, I've taken Toro courses. I've taken courses from Neil Davis. I've taken courses from Derek Harper. I've taken overwhelmingly there are more men in those courses than women those men are activating before the, the course is even over tour of course two weeks in some of them got five cars a fleet of 10 cars they are getting to the money and here here is why women have got to understand you're doing this wrong and you don't have the luxury to do it because especially if you have kids you have less time to make up for stuff that a man does Every male mentor that I have that has kids didn't raise their kids. I don't have. Now, there are single parents out there who are men. Don't get me wrong. But every male mentor I have that has kids didn't raise their kids. While they were burning the midnight oil, while they were in conferences, while they were out there feet on the street, 
While they were prospecting, while they were setting up systems, guess what? Their kids was being cared for by the mother. So they were able to go out and do all of that stuff, right? They were able to do it because they have more time. So to all the women who think, well, I can't do it, Kim, because, because I have these kids, I can't do it. It is because you have those kids that you have to do it. Even if you have to do the same thing that I did, which is buy a whole nother plane ticket and double the amount that you had allotted for food. You think, do you think I was going to let anything keep me from this event that was going to take me to the next level? No. My son had to get on that plane. I had to, I had to get the money for it. There are some people in your life that will try to control you with your children. They don't want to see you succeed. And if they, if they think they can do anything to help you, they won't do it because it's all about control. They don't have any control in their life. You know, if you have a great co-parenting situation, awesome. I'm not talking to you. But if you don't, that is all the more reason why you've got to get your ish together. Pay attention to where the marketplace is going. Start developing some skills. Start learning how to do some things on your own. And stop feeding into this ideology that as long as you get your master's degree and you go into corporate, that you can climb that ladder because those people in corporate don't care about you. And I'm, t I'm telling right now, your children need you. Stop hanging out with these men that y'all don't care about just because they got the bag. You know how they got the bag? Because somebody else was taking care of their kids. So yeah, they got the bag because they had time to go and get the bag because somebody else is taking care of their kids. And again, I'm not talking about the single dads who actually take care of their kids. But let me tell y'all something about, I, there's a single dad that I know of. There's a guy who, 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 who had a child and when his child's like seven, eight years old, her mom went to jail. So I was like, wow, he's going to raise this child on his own. Man, let me tell you something. That man had so many women in and out of his house. Do you know how many women was like, oh, that's so sweet. He's raising his child. He had a woman to do the hair. He had a woman to cook. He had a woman to pick the kid up from school. He had a woman to take the kid to school. He had a woman to take the kid shopping. He had multiple women that were doing. Some of them were married. Some of them were married. But let me tell you something. There's nothing that most women love more than a man who appears to be Raising a child on their own. So guess what? Whereas as a single a single parent mother, you don't want a whole bunch of men in and out of your house helping you to raise your child. Trust me, you don't. A single parent man, it's easy for him to get multiple women. A village, gladly. Like I said, some of them even marry. That man with his child's mother in jail, Still didn't do a damn thing for that child. A whole bunch of a village of women raised his child. So what I'm telling you women, for all of y'all that make excuses, I got all these kids, I ain't got no time. You have to do it because you have all of those kids and that's the only way you're going to get your time back. I'm telling you from experience because most of y'all see the writing on the wall and you just keep letting the bills fall further behind. You keep letting things get worse and worse. Then you call somebody like me and say, I need to make $5,000 like yesterday. It doesn't work like that. Pay attention to what's around you. Stop complaining about how it's different for men and women and just start learning to play the game that men are playing. That's why I don't let nothing keep me from my goals. That's why I don't let nothing keep me from the conferences, the seminars, the courses, whatever I have to do to go to the next level. I don't let, if I, if it's the money, I'll have to make an extra sale. I'll have to discount something. I'll have to, whatever, whatever I have to do, I'm going to do because guess who has my son? Me. Not his father, me. Right now, whatever his father wants to do, he can do. Whatever I want to do, I can't do. I have to do everything around karate, school, homework, everything. Right? That's, this is not a woe is me story. This is I want y'all to snap out of it story. And I'm not trying to take you to all the way to the other side, like I said, where you don't need a man and you got the bag on your own. No. King Ashley Ann said it herself after her husband cheated on her. After she spent years by herself, she built a multi-million dollar empire. Everybody knows her. If you don't know her, you should, right? And she just recently got engaged. And I'm so happy for you, for her. You know why? Because she maximized her, her season of single though. So now she's coming to this marriage 
a much better woman because she's complete on her own, right? She's coming into this marriage much better than the other one. You don't get a man because you need money, right? And you also don't keep from getting money because you don't have a man to help you out while you're on your journey. You pay attention to the marketplace. You pay attention to where things are going. You develop some skills that people will pay you for. Stop looking toward these corporations to do for you what they've never done for you and never will because they don't have to. While you are up here playing their game, your children are suffering. You are suffering and it's not worth it. So I want to see more females in these courses, in these seminars, in these non-traditional means of getting education that I'm a part of. Because I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm watching people like my boy Jeff Trills. He took the Toro course. He, he found a niche in Toro uh, that was totally different than the instructor, CEO Manny J. Manny J. J. rents out his luxury exotic vehicles to celebrities and to people that are on reality shows. And Jeff Trills said, okay, I don't have luxury exotic vehicles, but here's what I can do. I can use my connections. I can go get me a fleet of economy cars and I'm going to specifically niche down and rent out not on Toro, but to people who are doing ride share, Lyft and Uber. So whereas other people who are doing Toro are having a turnaround of one day, two day, three days, Jeff Trills is having a turnaround of two to three months. Right? Jeff Trills and I started the class about the same time. Jeff, I look up Jeff Trills not only is making a gang of money, shout out to my boy Jeff Trills, a gang of money because he activated on the information very, very quickly. Right? Not only is he making a gang of money on his niche in Toro, which is totally different than the instructor's niche, but he's making a gang of money on the course that he created to teach people how to do the same thing. How many people, how many women were in that Toro class? The majority of them were wives of the men who signed up for the course. There were a few women sprinkled in there, but mostly men. Women right now still value formal education. Men are getting to the bag way quicker with informal education because they're paying attention to the marketplace. They're activating on the information much quicker. They're capitalizing on their time. Uh, I know tons of men right now who choose not to be in a relationship because they are getting to the bag. I know tons of women right now who are trying to get into a relationship because they're trying to get to the bag through a man. We're doing it wrong. We're doing it wrong. Let me go get my channel. I'll talk to y'all later.